did mention um, in my podcast that I was going to be doing this and, you know, the documentary came out yesterday, uh, well, from my time zone yesterday evening, um, already dealing with a lot of uh, PTSD symptoms, so this uh, annoying documentary probably wouldn't have been, you know, my smartest idea to watch, but, um, and I do want to emphasize for those of you who are dealing with trauma, uh, any form of, uh, PTSD, complex PTSD, you know, whether that has to do with domestic violence, whether that has to do with sexual assault, whether that has to do with, you know, um, childhood trauma, um, all aspects, all lengths. I always uh, push for people, especially those individuals who deal with trauma, to never put themselves in a situation where if you know you're struggling, if you know that you're having, you know, dissociation, you're having flashbacks, you're having any type of issues, any type of uh, instability, any type of symptoms of the PTSD, uh, at the end of the day, it's not a smart idea. Uh, a lot of the time of the watching the documentary, I couldn't help but roll my eyes. Um, I was taking notes while, you know, listening and a lot of the stuff I had already said, you know, a lot of the stuff uh, I talked about in 2020, uh, when you know, uh, the allegations first started coming out. I talked about, uh, uh, everybody's uproar against the, uh, We Are Chaos album. Um, why people were making such a big deal about his song, Perfume, that it was aimed towards, um, Evan Rachel Wood. And, uh, I did actually find the freaking article. Uh, how ironic that, you know, when I needed to find the article, it was nowhere to be found and people were saying that they were hiding it. And then I looked it up and sure enough, you know, with my researching skills, I was able to find it specifically because every time I typed in an article or every time I typed in Evan Rachel Wood, you know, her stupid political activism popped up and it's not even she can't really claim herself as an activist if at the end of the day it's it's an agenda obviously it's she's trying to push she's trying to get rid of her her you know uh that's what it seems like to me you know she's trying to get rid of her acting career and she's going into politics she's uh this is something that she wants to push rather than doing what she does best. Um, to me, the documentary was performative. A lot of it was, was really, really, uh, really performative. A lot of the stuff she supposedly didn't know. Um, she kept asking, uh, Ilma is her name. Um, she kept asking her, you know, her, her buddy, buddy that she's not friends anymore. Now, uh, they broke that off and, um, you know, uh, according to now, according to Evan Rachel Wood, that it's, it was all her doing. It was all her fault, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the interesting thing too, is that she was pushing, you know, this, this narrative that it's just, it was a lot, you know? Um, but a lot of it too, is that she basically, I couldn't hold it together. Um, a lot of the questions she was asking was, oh, does this count as sex trafficking? Does this count as uh, being held against my will? Does this count as sex trafficking of uh, being raped over and over and over and over? If you don't know the definition of something, why are you asking somebody else who doesn't know and is clearly ignorant on the idea? And uh, Emma Gore basically uh, posted on Twitter saying that she lied about everything and, and was 
being truthful about everything if you go on Twitter. I don't have Twitter, but I uh, follow a bunch of people that um, have been following this closely and have been calling out Evan Rachel Wood um, uh, that are like, uh, there are a lot of uh, diehard Merlin Manson fans that I know of that basically uh, have come to me saying, you know, we we, we want you to um, do your diligence and see what you can come up with compared to, like, basically in comparison to what other people are talking about. But for me, um, I don't know if it's the fact that I... I, I don't even know how to put this in words. I don't know if it's the fact that I am not someone who is uh, drawn to celebrities. I'm, I'm not someone who worshipped them. Maybe it was because, you know, growing up the way I did and um, knowing what I know uh, behind the scenes and meeting uh, every... From, from every, basically, industry you can think of, I've met... Um, I've only met, uh, very, very few, uh, like, guitars, bassists, drummers, as far as, like, rock bands. So, to be more specific, um, you know, I've, I've met guitarists and drummers, uh, from the bands, uh, Deftones, um, it was a long list. Uh, I had gone to like Lollapalooza. I've gone to like uh, a, a different um, heavy metal, uh, uh, like a headbangers ball type of type of deal, but it wasn't to that extent. Um, but like you know, Mudvayne, Deftones. Um, and a lot of, you know, the Headbangers Ball isn't just metal, you know, it's hard rock, rock, alternative. It's, it's just like a long list of the different aspects of um, basically rock and roll <laughs> um, of our generation. And, you know, the, the I've met, you know, so many different people. And to me, it's like, it doesn't faze me. I've never met um, Marilyn Manson, although I was a huge fan, and to this day, that's still like a, a shock to a lot of people. I I don't know why, um, but I think it's because you know people because I'm deaf, uh, considered deaf blind, but because I'm deaf, people are like, how the hell uh, could you listen to to heavy metal if you can't even listen to it? And people forget that Marilyn Manson isn't considered heavy metal. Um, if you look at his genres of music, it's really not considered heavy metal. Um, it just depends on the album, uh, but overall, he is not a uh, metal person. Um, I listen to other uh, metal bands that, again, aren't in that category, but they are seen as metal because of, you know, how their songs are presented. But if there are melodies in rock songs, it can't be considered metal. Um, for those of you who don't know the, the, you know, generalization of any kind of, you know, rock music or music in general, if you guys don't know the detailing of how music works um, and how different genres are depicted, um, it really depends on on that aspect. And I... I when I was younger, you know, I wanted to meet Marilyn Manson and his persona is what has gotten so many people uh, intoxicated, I want to say, uh, to his lifestyle, to how he presents himself. Um, I have not listened to his music uh, in years. Uh, I think the last album that I listened to... Um, I can't think of it now, but I will get back to that later. But I, I did talk about, you know, um, the golden age of grotesques in my last, you know, video last year that I made of this because I knew that this was going to, I knew this wasn't going to end. And clearly with his lawsuit and 
uh, everything that's going to go on now, um, that things are coming to light and, and clearly uh, Evan Rachel Wood and her sidekick basically lied about everything. Um, a lot of dramatization in the documentary, a lot of performative, uh, you know, basically a lot of performative uh, activism, which which was interesting because she did call out um, a, a bunch of people over the course of many, many years of people being performative activists and she's one herself. So a lot of hypocrisy um, that I have been seeing my, for myself and a lot of people have been telling me that, you know, she's just... She's uh, more mentally ill than she's placing uh, Brian Warner. Um, that I had an issue with as well, and I understand his lawsuit. I understand why he is going after her and, you know, her sidekick big time because um, what I don't understand, and as someone who came from a lot of deep-rooted trauma, is you have these people on social media, you have these big time celebrities, you have YouTubers, you have influencers, basically anybody you can freaking think of that deal with trauma, right? So you have a lot of these individuals saying, oh, well, I, I, I need to tell my story and, you know, I hate when people call out other people for, you know, being traumatized and, and telling their story, but then in the same breath, you're not only exploiting that other person, but you're telling their story and it's not yours to tell. It is not yours to make fun of. It is not yours to demonize because you have an agenda you need to push so forcefully and so harshly. So a lot of the times when people were talking about her, um, her stunt, I want to call it, and I didn't respond. I didn't look at the video because I, I knew that it was like, a, you know, feminists need to stick together and feminists need to push this narrative to give her what she wants, right? And she did get what she wanted. She, you know, was able to push the act. I mean, he hasn't really talked about his childhood. Um... Some of the stuff he does talk about and, you know, it's more towards, you know, personal fans. It's more towards in the music. If you listen to the music, if you listen to the lyrics, um, regardless of how you may have been treated by your parents, you know, every loss is hard. Um, especially if, you know, abuse happened in the family. It's still hard. It's still uh, something to grieve. It's still something to to mourn, it's still something you have to add to your uh, your story, your, your pain, your trauma, and so on and so forth. You know, it's never ending. I always remind people that, you know, trauma takes a lifetime to heal until your very last breath, unfortunately. Uh, people don't want to hear that. They want, you know, a, a quick, you know, let's overnight solution or, or overnight drug or an overnight pill that will cure you and it's the end all be all it's all bullshit so for you know her to spin the narrative that she was a I was a baby I was a child I was a little kid um people don't understand where this is coming from like I've seen so many uh people speaking on this you know whether they're women whether they're they're men whether they're non-binary um I've seen so many people speak on this and a lot of people are saying where does this come from? Where does this mentality come from where she keeps saying that she was a child, she was a baby, and she was 18? Okay, I think I can shed some light into this because I've seen this with so many people um, throughout, you know, social media, throughout, um, you know, uh, with public speaking, with, with, you know, the work that I've done in, in mental health. Um, that mentality, because I, I picked up on that, I watched an interview, um, that she did with, uh, A&E did like a biography on Marilyn Manson, and I forget who it was, uh, I believe it was Twiggy, uh, it, to be exact, but don't quote me on that, but I believe it was Twiggy, um, if I remember correctly, uh, 
that said that he understood why they got along so well because they were both childlike and they both acted like kids. And he said that uh, Evan Rachel Wood's uh, personality is like she never grew up. So it's like she stayed the age is where her trauma started. I think she was... I believe she was like, uh, if I remember again correctly, like six or seven when her parents started being abusive towards each other, like the the fighting, the the, the violence that she claims that happened uh, when she was a kid um, and her father being absent. And then uh, in the, in the, in the sense that, you know, he was abusive and never around or when he was around, he was abusive. And then, you know, her parents took off and, and fled or her and her mom, you know, fled and took off. And her brother felt like he had to stay with her or him because he didn't want him to be alone, um, which is normal for a child to, to feel when they're given an ultimatum, basically. Um, it, it's it's a hard thing to deal with as a kid, you know. Um, but you know, for for her to say that she was a baby and she was eighteen, she wasn't a she wasn't a teenager. Um, she was actually you know underage when she was dating uh, Edward Norton, and uh, Edward Norton is I believe eighteen years older than she is. Um, so she is my age. Uh, Evan Rachel Wood is my age, but she is like, I want to say like three months. Yeah, three months older than I am. But she's we're the same age. And, you know, for, for her to date a, you know, a guy that's 18 years older than her at the age of, you know, between the ages of 16 through 7 through, yeah, 16 through 17, um... And then she dated, uh, she didn't date, or she didn't meet Marilyn Manson until she was 18. And then they dated when she was 19. So that's technically, that's not a baby. Um, but I think, again, that, that, that mindset comes from, you know, the PTSD running around in her head because she can't keep, not only can you not, uh, it's like you're like to me. It's like she's blending all of the um, traumas together, you know. And and I would imagine that you know if you're eight, if you're you know between the ages of eighteen, sorry, between the ages of of you know fifteen through through seventeen, which again uh, the the timelines are a, a lot off. Um, I've heard numbers from so many different people and, sh and even Rachel Wood keeps going back for and forth on her numbers as well. But I think what's happening is it's blurring, you know, the, 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 the PTSD makes it to the point where it's blurring and she puts herself in a lot of these positions. So what ends up happening is she creates more, you know, chaos than she's actually uh, trying to heal uh, in a sense. So I think that dating an older guy like that, there's going to be some type of, some type of issue, some type of control issue, some type of, you know, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be problematic. Um, you know, being that I lost, you know, my father, as you all know, I was a predator, pedophile, whatever you want to call that. Um, I lost him at 15 and then I started dating a guy, uh, you know, 10 years older than I was. Um, I don't know psychologically how that comes about where girls that lose their dads and have, you know, daddy issues, we tend to be drawn to older men. We tend to, um, as, for, for every girl is different that has, you know, daddy issues, you know, you, uh, 
if you have some form of trauma that, that stems from either both of your parents or one of your parents, mine happen to be both. But um, it, it's, it just depends on the, on the girl or the woman uh, growing into adulthood. But you try to fill that void or you try to find somebody that's unfortunately, in a sense, um, your parents. Um, but for me, uh, I think that it's basically was you know, me just trying to deal with everything. Um, the relationship didn't last that long, but, you know, it is what it is. And um, I feel like for her, she's just, unfortunately, she, she just can't keep up with everything that she has put herself into. And for her to claim, you know, naive and for her to claim ignorance and for her to claim... Oh, it is, it, it's, uh, I didn't know who he was and, and she's full of shit because everybody knew who he was. Um, she even referenced him as a crossdresser. Uh, I, I don't know if she was trying to make fun of him. I don't know if she was trying to act like, you know, he was part of the LGBTQ or she was just trying to provoke him. I think, I think. You know, it's more so of trying to provoke him because she is vindictive for whatever reason. Um, because when they first dated, she broke up with him. And then when they dated again, he broke up with her. And it, it, it just seems a little skeptical because you claimed that you couldn't stand him and then you went from that to oh well I was afraid for my life that's that's why you kept going back if you're afraid for your life you keep going back to the abuser what like okay I think thinking of thinking from a person that has okay I've gone through domestic violence I've been in that situation where if I tried to leave I literally almost got killed, you know, and I do talk about that on my channel. Um, it, it, it happens where the person ends up having, uh, the perpetrator ends up having severe anxiety. That's what, that's what happens. They having severe anxiety. They need to have you in their life for whatever mental instability that they're dealing with right whatever they're dealing with they need you in their life they they need to continue to control that continue to play their game push their narrative push their whatever it is they're trying to accomplish right and they ultimately do try to kill you so i've been in in three or two yeah two instances where i tried to leave and they uh ended up literally trying to kill me the first individual who was a woman uh ended up you know uh we got into it you know i was trying to leave and i defended myself and even though i got cut up pretty badly with a smirnoff bottle that was broken open we really got into it but uh, i ended up going into the hospital because i just had you know gallbladder surgery and they needed to check me for internal bleeding um it was that bad and then the second time, the guy, you know, literally tried to choke me to death to the point where he dug his long nails into me. Um, and I was just, you know, ferociously uh, bleeding uh, from the neck down and um, literally tried to choke me to death. Uh, luckily, I had, you know, people there trying to help me out. Um, and then, the you know, the third instance of... It wasn't so much domestic violence. It was more so an abusive relationship. It was more so uh, toxic from from my end. It was more so that towards that realm, and he ended up taking his own life. Um, so yeah. Um, so I found it suspicious automatically when she kept saying that she didn't. She was afraid of him. She was terrified of him. She couldn't name him. Blah blah blah. But then you keep you kept going back to him. 
Oh, well, he kept trying to convince me. He convinced me. I couldn't help it. He convinced me. Okay, you, you, you got to pick one because you're going back and forth. You're pissing a lot of people off. You're driving everybody crazy with this nonsense. And at the end of the day, like, she is going to get dragged through the mud for this. Especially now since, you know, her sidekick basically revealed that they lied about this. Um, and it was all for a political stance, you know, she's trying to get into politics, she's trying to, uh, whatever it is her goal was, it, 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 it didn't last very long, you know. Um, what else? Okay, so besides, you know, everybody being upset about that, so she's pushing that narrative, the heart-shaped... Uh, heart-shaped glasses, uh, broken heart-shaped glasses. I, I believe that's the name of the video. Um, he, she, she came. She, they, they saw each other and they hung out. And she wore those heart-shaped sunglasses um, that are like you could, they're like really really cheaply. Um, you can buy them like at you know Walgreens or whatever. Or Walmart or whatever and um, she wore them and he said you know if you break my heart I will break those heart shapes uh, glasses and um, that's when he made that video and then her claims of uh, basically saying that she uh, you know her, her claims of, of being raped and being on drugs, uh, he, he pushed a lot of drugs on there, and if you look into a lot of interviews of people that have been on the set with that music video, and then uh, people that know him personally, um, she lied about the whole thing because uh, she pushes more drugs than Marilyn Manson did. She was more on drugs than Marilyn Manson was. She's was starting drugs uh, at the age of 15. Um, I don't know why this is a shock to a lot of people. This is like, like 15, I can't believe it. It's like when you've gone through a lot of trauma and you have a lot of abuse in the family, um, it's inevitable. You're just trying to deal with everything that's around you. And then being a child star doesn't help because you have no parental guidance, you have no way to, to support you, you have yes people, you know, you have handlers that are willing to sedate you, that are willing to shut you up, that are willing to uh, do whatever they can. Um, and me being, you know, in the uh, environment that I grew up in, uh, I started drugs at a very young age. Again, I talk about this on the channel. Um, so it's not inevitable, you know, it's it's not uh, something that should be a surprise to many people. Um, but I did start drugs, you know, at the age of 11. And then obviously it quickly escalated as the years went on. But my actual true drug of choice um, is, you know, my eating disorder. And it was, you know, my self-harm and my eating disorder before I, you know, finally recovered. And... Um, you know, obviously, I, I had to recover from the drugs and alcohol as well. So, yeah, it's it's going to happen for people that have trauma and deal with trauma. Um, I think also uh, Marilyn Manson's choice of addiction and escapism was more so self-harm. It, it, it really was more so uh, hurting himself and... He did, uh, he did mention that after they broke up, that uh, he was already dealing with enough as it was. So on top of their breakup, and I feel like he had a lapse of judgment because he had a falling out with uh, Didi Von Tees. And um, they had, a you know, a, a, an estranged marriage. It was already a tough marriage. Uh, they were best friends and then, you know, things went south. Um, and Marilyn Manson was going to do what he wanted to do. And this was, you know, back in the day and, um, 
it's a lot of the times people in marriages can't compromise and it is what it is. And, um, you know, that's when he saw a fascination for Evan Rachel Wood and he adored her and, um, you know, what grown man wouldn't <laughs> be fascinated with an 18 year old, uh, sorry, 19 year old when they started dating, but, uh, you know, and he became friends with her first. She's claiming that as grooming, but he came, became friends with her at first. I'm sorry, but there's no such thing as grooming when it comes to adult women. Just saying. And, uh, you know, um, there, there, I know people want to, are going to argue that there is grooming when it comes to domestic violence situations between two adults, but I can't help but laugh because, uh, that's not the same thing. Okay. When you get into a relationship with someone, you don't know that they're going to be abusive. You don't know. We don't know that they have an ulterior motive later on in the relationship. You cannot read people's minds. Not everyone's a fucking genie. We're not all gods. And we're not able to sense right away that the person's going to be a horrible person down the line. We don't know. We really don't. Um, so I think people need to remember that as well. Um, but yeah, she you know, she lied about a lot of things. A lot of things have, you know, come to light and especially those individuals that, you know, stand with Marilyn and uh, especially those that have worked with him, those that, uh, especially like ex-girlfriends and stuff like that. They're, you know, also painting uh, Evan Rachel Wood as a manipulator, that, that someone that is controlling, someone that is, uh, that needs uh, real help for her mental, mental illness. Um, and people, I need people to remember also that uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, no matter what level you have, no matter what, there are five, uh, there's five categories of, um, you know, PTSD. And I have complex PTSD, which in turn never goes away. Um, and the the thing of it is is that uh, it's not a mental illness. I need people to need people to clearly remember this because I see a lot of misinformation, a lot of people claiming that you know PTSD is a mental it's it's a neurological disorder. Um, there besides abuse, besides um, domestic violence, the, 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 besides trauma, that is not the ultimate thing that PTSD comes from, okay? Uh, if you have any type of brain damage, uh, whether you were born with it, whether you had some type of head trauma later on in life, you are susceptible to PTSD. If you are someone who is chronically ill or disabled, you are susceptible to PTSD. If you are someone who again, had any type of uh, trauma, abuse, neglect, susceptible to PTSD. Um, it is an actual scarring in your brain that you cannot get rid of. So imagine like, okay, so I'm going to give you guys an example. So if you guys can see that I had, I used to have extra digits as a baby. I was born with, you know, extra fingers and toes. And I do have surgical, I did have a surgical removal um, at the age of two. And, um, that scarring obviously never went away. I'm 34 now. So the, imagine this same concept on your brain. Um, and that's, you know, basically where the back of your head, where the, the memory uh, parts portion of where your, your, uh, your, your brain, you know, collects all those memories and all the trauma. And it's just like your brain can't let it go. Um, so it is a, a again, a neurological disorder. Um, that's why I tell people that it takes a lifetime to heal, especially if you've actually dealt with this type of stuff. Um, and it's understandable why, you know, her claims of uh, her relationships don't work. Well, if you're manipulating and you're the main problem in the relationships, they're not going to work. 
Um, so obviously she needs to heal herself before she gets back into another relationship and causes more damage and trauma for her child, you know? Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of, you know, interesting factors behind her behaviors and, um, what she's trying to, I think it's more so, uh, I don't think it's a cancel culture thing. I think it's more so like a smear campaign towards Merlin Manson. And then a lot of people were wondering too, did he break the oath? Like, did he break an oath that he wasn't supposed to? Did he do something that he wasn't supposed to in the industry as to why they're attacking him? Why there's a campaign against him? Um, and the reason I say that is because, um, and you guys are going to have to do your research. I can't, you know, talk about this again on YouTube. But uh, if you break the oath in the industry and you are part of, you know, many, many, many uh, secret societies or whatever. But if you break the oath, then that's when the smear campaigns comes against you, um, if you guys noticed. And whether, you know, that's, you know, me too, stand up, time's up, of whatever, right? And, um, you know, a, a lot of people speculate that maybe he did something that he wasn't supposed to. Maybe he said something he wasn't supposed to. Maybe he, uh, he did something and that's why they're, they're going against him. I, that I can't, obviously, I, I don't know. I don't know these people, so I can't attest, but it could be very well a, a possibility. It, I mean, that's an idea that a lot of people are throwing out there as well. That why, that's why um, the media is pushing this. That's why you know she's pushing this, and and she's able to have people back her up, and and so on and so forth. Um, but now that you know things are coming to light that she did lie, uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to say what's gonna happen after this. So if you are not aware, she did claim in this interview that, you know, she finds rape jokes hilarious, but it has to be the right rape joke. So yeah, put that in perspective when you're thinking about watching this documentary and trying to, you know, take the side of the woman that, you know, the woman's always right. One of the things that I have, obviously, um... It may have been hard for some of you to hear, especially if you are someone who has dealt with, you know, being uh, assaulted uh, sexually, um, regardless of, of what uh, situation you have made at that that may have been something that's hard to hear, especially if someone that's coming from, you know, an individual that is supposedly an activist, right? Um... At the end of the day, uh, we need to remember, and this is why I do these videos, especially when it comes to celebrities and, you know, public figures and, you know, these, these individuals obviously have an agenda. Um, if you are someone who has dealt with this, if you are someone who, uh, who came out the other end, um, some people don't get, some, you know, women and men don't get so lucky when they have had to deal with this. Um... Another thing to remember, and please keep in mind that a lot of this is purposely to trigger you. A lot of this is to push, you know, uh, more depression and anxiety that you do not need. This is to provoke you. This is to uh, paint another narrative, uh, especially for those individuals that aren't out and about, that aren't, um, you know, a part of the rest of society that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, obviously there's a lot of violence going on right now. There's a lot of, uh, things going on right now on top of everything else that we're dealing with in, you know, here in America. But, um, you know, just remember that there's an agenda behind this. And if you at all get triggered by this, or if you at all get annoyed with this, it's understandable. Um, but please do not take this to heart. Do not take this personal. Um, this has nothing to do with your situation. Um, and please uh, reach out to people if you need to, if you seek help already, um, or if you just need to um, vent or whatever. My DMs are available. Um, I did, you know, do mentoring. I did do uh, 
I am a, a peer support specialist, especially in recovery as well. Um, so if you guys just need to talk, um, feel free to DM me. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, I think everything that has said to need to be said, you know, um, there's really not much else that can come of this, except it's going to be really, really, really messy and it's going to get, uh, really, really salacious between these two, because obviously there's like a, you know, that everything is divisive. Everything is pick a side. Everything is, you know, let's, let's pull everybody apart, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, so again, if you are someone who has dealt with this or has recently dealt with this, just, you know, keep in mind to keep your sanity and your, uh, mental stability in, in check. Um, if, you know, you are someone who wasn't aware of, of any of this, um, I can, you know, put my other videos up on the end cards and I will let you guys go and hopefully you guys are doing well. So love you guys. Bye.